Jarra the Unicorn, and I'm here at Twisted Headquarters to show you how to catch a float when you're working with Stranded Color Work. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this video, I'll be showing you three ways to catch a float. To skip ahead to the simple twisting method, go to timestamp 215. To skip ahead to advanced method one, this is the method when your working yarn is in your left hand and your float yarn is in your right hand, go to timestamp 415. To skip ahead to advanced method two, this is the method when your working yarn is in your right hand and your float yarn is in your left hand, go to timestamp 815. All right, for my example today, I'm going to be using this beautiful hat pattern by Sarah Birch called Norland. So when you're working with stranded color work, the floats are these strands behind your work that get carried along behind the stitches that are being knit. As you can see, all of mine are pretty short. A general rule of thumb is you want them to be less than an inch long. You don't want them to get caught on things and stretch out. So, we're going to catch our float. As you can see, if I knit these 10 blue stitches in between these two white stitches, a long float ends up happening. And we don't want that. So we're gonna catch that float halfway so each of our floats are about an inch long. You can do that at smaller intervals, but for today's example, I'm just gonna do it in the halfway. All right, first I'm gonna show you the easiest way I'm going to knit to my halfway point with my blue yarn. And now I'm going to catch my float. The very simplest way to do this is to take my white strand behind my blue strand and bring it over the top. So I've twisted it. Let me show you that again. I'm going to take my white strand underneath my blue strand and I'm gonna give those a little twist. Let me show you that just one more time. I'm going to take my white strand underneath my blue strand and I'm gonna give those a little twist. So my white strand is coming from behind the blue one and then over and back around. Now, I'm going to knit my next stitch with my blue, keeping that white out of the way. And I'm gonna to continue to knit my blue. Now time for white. Let's turn the work around and see how we did. Perfect. As you can see, instead of a long white strand or a long white float, we have two shorter floats because it was caught right here with that blue yarn. I'm gonna take that out and then go into advanced mode and show you a couple of other ways to do it. When I'm doing stranded color work, I like to hold one strand in my left hand and knit continental and one strand in my right hand and throw that side. So when I'm catching a float, when I'm knitting this way, there are two ways to do it. If the float is going to be in your right hand and you're knitting the stitches in your left hand, here's how you catch your float. Your first step is to insert your right needle into your stitch just like normal. The next step is to bring your white strand around behind and underneath your needle and pull it behind. Now you're going to bring your working yarn or the one that you're gonna make the stitch with around the needle in the same direction that that white strand went. You are now going to move your white strand 
around the needle and then you will complete your knit stitch. Let's do that again. Your first step is to insert your right needle into your next stitch that you're going to knit. Now we're going to move our float, so not the stitch that we're working, but the float that we want to catch around your right needle as though you're going to knit it, but you're not going to complete that stitch because we don't want to knit that one in there. Now we're going to bring our working yarn that we want to make a stitch with around the needle as though we're going to knit it. But before completing that stitch, we're going to move our white between our needles and behind the right needle so that it's not completed in the stitch. Now we're going to complete our knit stitch. Let's do that one more time. We're going to insert our right needle into the stitch to be knit. Now we're going to take our float yarn and we're going to wrap it around our right needle as though we're going to knit it, but we're not going to complete that stitch. We're now going to bring our working yarn that we do want to complete a stitch with around the needle the same way that the white strand went. Now we move our white strand between our needles and back behind the right needle and then we're going to complete that stitch. So we have our blue stitch and let me complete this section so I can show you what it looks like. Okay, let's turn our work around and there we have it. We've caught our float. Now you'll notice with this method, the float is caught in two separate spots. I really like when this happens because it's a little bit more secure than the first way. And the other advantage is that it's not getting twisted around, which means that your yarn gets less twisted. It's not a big deal to have to untwist your yarn, but it's nice to get to skip that step. As you can see, we have two floats rather than one long float. Okay. Let me show you the third and final way to catch a float that I'm going to do in this tutorial. So here's an explanation of how to catch your float when your working yarn is in your right hand and your float yarn is in your left hand. Usually, if I'm not going to catch my float, I'm just going to knit this stitch like usual, keeping this white yarn out of the way. However, if I want to catch this white yarn into that stitch behind my work, when I insert my right needle into the next stitch, instead of going in front of this float yarn, I'm going to go behind it. So I'm inserting my needle into the stitch and going behind the float yarn. So the float yarn is now in between my needles. I'm now going to wrap my working yarn around my needle like usual. I'm going to move my float yarn out of the way of the stitch. I don't want to catch it in the stitch. I'm going to move it out of the way. So let's look at that again. I'm going to insert my right needle into my next stitch, making sure that it goes behind my float yarn. So that's right in the middle. The float yarn is right in the middle of my needles. Now I'm going to wrap my yarn, my working yarn, as though I'm going to knit like usual. 
and I'm going to move this white yarn out of the way behind. And then I'm going to complete my knit stitch. I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to insert my right needle into my next stitch behind my float yarn. I'm going to wrap my working yarn around my needle as though to knit. And I'm gonna get that strand, that white strand out of the way and complete my knit stitch. Now let me show you. And voila, we've caught our float. And you can see that that doesn't show up because it's behind your blue yarn. But you have two nice sized floats rather than a big long one. Well, thank you for joining me in this video about how to catch your floats. I hope it was helpful. I hope you're having a magical day. Ta-ta.